Director of Maintenance and Operations, Paul Neem, will show us around the plant and show us how wastewater can be treated and turned into clean effluent water. Our journey begins here at the Headworks building. So all the water comes uh, to us, it's all pumped. None of the water comes here by gravity, which is a little unusual for a wastewater treatment plant. So it's all pumped here and it goes through some meters and then it comes up into these units, which are fine screens. Band screens, and they're kind of like a bandsaw where you've got a blade going up and we're fully coming back down. Here the water is coming in between these, the screen and it flows out both sides. The water is flowing this way. That's all happening down below us here. As screens, uh, as uh, rags and other material that get caught on the screen, uh, well, they get caught to it and then the screen comes up to the top and the spray of water that you see here is spraying on top of that screen trying to knock the screenings into a, a trough. Then those screenings come down the trough into this long, long trough, and so all the rag material, any other bigger material that can't fit through a quarter-inch diameter hole are flowing down uh, through this channel to the screening's handling area. And then these pumps over here are chopper pumps. And they will chop up the screenings because uh, sometimes, you know, the long strands of rags and that kind of thing, so they get, get chopped up and then pumped up through the pipes here, up to the mezzanine area. We'll go up there and take a look. So the screenings come up here, they get uh, watered in this press over here to your right, and then they'll fall down. just to spread the flow over all of the, uh, the primary tanks. Uh, water flows into the primary tanks. It takes about uh, two hours for the water to flow through these tanks. When it gets down to the other end, you'll see how it, uh, how it comes out. Two things happen here, really. We get floating material, and uh, we also have solace that settles to the bottom. So these uh, collectors that are that you see on top of the tanks are made out of fiberglass, they're about six inches deep, and the computer system will turn those on uh, four times a day, slowly push all the floating stuff to the other end of the tank. We can walk down there and you can see what that is. This is usually greases and oils from cooking and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's lighter than water, so it's close to the, to the surface. And then uh, once a day, somebody from the building and grounds crew or one of the operators will come out. They tip this trough just enough to let that floating material, the grease, flow into it. And this material then is sent over to the digesters. It's a good food source for the, the microorganisms in the digesters. Uh, the collectors, once they get over here, then go down to the bottom of the tank and push all the solids that have settled to the bottom into a hopper on the other side so we can pump that out. And that, that's called primary sludge. All right. You can see how the water here flows over these V-notched weirs. And uh, this material has had about uh, maybe uh, 40 to 50 percent of the BOD removed, uh, maybe 60 percent of the suspended solids, but very little nutrients have been removed at this point. And that's what we need the uh, aeration tanks for. We take air, just uh, atmospheric air, filter it, and then there are blowers in there that compress the air and pump it through pipes that are down in the tunnel out to these uh, silver pipes that you see on top of the tank. And then there are pipes that take the air down to the bottom of the uh, aeration tank. Down on the bottom are a series of uh, diffusers. They, they're round discs. They look like grinding stones. And the air comes through those uh, diffusers in very uh, small bubbles. Uh, and the smaller the bubble, the more surface area there is for a certain volume, and uh, that makes them a little more efficient than important bubbles. So what's happening here, Kim, is the, uh, the mix 
liquor from the aeration tanks, that mixture of microorganisms and wastewater, is flowing into the center of the tank. The center ring is just a bath of about five feet deep. The tanks themselves are 13 feet deep. So the center baffle just gets uh, everything to slow down and the microorganism starts to flagellate, which means they kind of glom together and get heavy enough then to settle out. Uh, so they're settling to the bottom. The treated water is what you see coming over the top here to the outer channel. The uh, sweep arm that you see on the tank here rotates around uh, and it pushes any floating material around the tank and up to this ramp over here and drops it into that trough. Uh, normally there's not a lot of floating material but it's, it's there to clean that off. And then on the bottom of the tank, on the opposite side of this, this sweep arm, is a device that's picking up all the solids that have settled at the bottom. I don't know if you saw any of these empty when you were here this summer. Yeah. Just basically a big pipe. Okay, because we're not uh, disinfecting right now, we're in the winter season and we're cleaning all these units. This is a lamp bank of ultraviolet light. The lights are actually enclosed within quartz too. And the water flows around the quartz tube. The ultraviolet light goes through the quartz tube and is uh, absorbed by the DNA of the microorganisms that might be in the water. And that changes its DNA so it no longer can replicate that sort of filter. These land banks are normally down beneath the channel and you can see there's one in over here. So the water will normally be running through this channel, over the top of the land bank, and then out into another channel on the other side. Try to entrain uh, a lot of oxygen in the water at this point by uh, dropping into this channel and uh, saturating it. 